plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody! On the ground! I wanna see you kissing the flooring! Money! Now, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, yeah, hey, I, I, I... Now! Before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. Felt the, could feel the guy's pain, his stress, his hope. Hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. We'll see in the orbs. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind. Roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat, the gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything. Every little detail. Even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and uh, Serpentine. Everybody! So, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything. All the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks it. Make some pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Ah, I wanna see you kissing the flooring! Money! Never. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the roller's cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. 
All right, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Well, we'll fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, get it, no! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law. So Braindance is a pretty big part of the cyberpunk universe. It's not just something used for adult films. There is an awful lot to it. And there's two sides I'd really like you guys to help me explore. First is the lore. So how this actually fits into the universe. And then there's the gameplay side. So how players will be interacting with it. So Patrick, could you tell us more about the lore of Braindance? I would love to. Uh, so in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, Braindance was invented way back in the early 2000s at UC Santa Cruz. It was developed as a way of recording a person's experiences and then playing them back for someone else as, so that they could relive them as though it was happening to them. It was originally used for things like therapy and prisoner rehabilitation, but by 2077 it's become this global media industry, including things like movies, mass, mass entertainment, things like that, video games, some interactive things and of course adult fair as well. Now in our game we deal a lot with black brain dances or XBDs as we call them and there are different types of those but the one that you saw in the trailer just there was a flatliner. Now that's where the person recording it actually dies during the recording and it's popular with sort of an illicit kind of a thrill but a mercenary can also use them for various things and you'll see that in the game of course. And from the gameplay perspective, we have been working a lot throughout last years trying to figure out the best way how to use the brain dance in the game as a mechanics. So what we have settled on is this brain dance editor mode. As a player, you will be able to run the brain dance in the editor mode and see different clues that have been registered on the peripheral of given actor. Now, as a player, you can slide on the timeline of the recording back and forth, trying to uncover different clues. And that clues are actually telling a story in the game. So as a player, you will run different investigations that will lead you to uh, different mysteries and you will uncover them actually using that brain dance as a mechanics in the game. So as Pavel was saying, we use Braindance as a storytelling tool. It's not a collectible, it's not something where you're gonna go in and you're gonna play it and you're gonna be like, I've seen this before. What we use Braindance for is to give you a keyhole into the life of the residents of Night City. And we can explore things like childhood trauma, religion, various philosophical ideas in a way that you might not otherwise experience in a story about a mercenary on the tough streets. So we've tried to talk about some of the aspects that we think the community will find really exciting, but you know, while you're both here, I'd love to know what is it about cyberpunk that you guys are really excited for? Uh, Patrick, why don't you start? So one of the things that I'm most excited about in this game is the characters and the way they interact with the world. We've got this really interesting world that stretches all the way back to the Cyberpunk 2020 source material and all of these events and all of those things, but those don't mean anything unless they connect with characters. And so when we come up with a character, we start with their function. What is this person? What do they do in the story? But we don't stop there. We go back and we figure out what was their childhood like? What was their upbringing like? What kind of obstacles did they face in this harsh reality? And did they overcome them? And how did they overcome them? Or did they not overcome them and why? And you can see all of those things in their environment, in their dialogues, in sort of how they operate in the world. 
And we come up with that for all of our characters. Now you look at someone like Victor Vector. I love this town. The city of endless opportunity. Ready to get your cherry popped? Yeah, come on! City like any other. Just bigger. No, mano. Not just any other city. Legends are born here. The Major Leagues. We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. But we are. They just don't know it yet. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Unless you catch a bull. Even then, you go out with a bang, right? You know, you can make heaps more eddies as a motivational speaker. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. So what's the gig, Dex? You meant to come out in one piece? <laughs> <laughs> How about we go over the plan? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm hmm. Arasaka. We are robbing some heavy hitters. Thought you could blackmail me, fucker! High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Cut king, baby. Goes without saying, we do this on the hush. Ideally, no bodies. Not a one. Sounds simple enough. Lead, Is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, me, amor. We're bulletproof. Get your ass moving now! What the fuck just happened in there? Can't stop digging night city. Fucking major leaks. Happy now, Jackie? Yeah, I fucking hide! Time to bail! Oh my god, we're so fucked. Dix! What the fuck? Game is could be. And you, who are you? Ah! Fuck. So the trailer contains footage from the game's prologue only, but there was an awful lot in it. So Pavel, why don't you try and help us unpack everything that we just saw? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely, I can try. So um, what you have just seen is only the prologue of the game. So that awesome stuff is only happening in the first few quests. What the trailer shows you is really our stage, the night city, you know, this gigantic city built of six completely unique districts surrounded by the seventh one that we call the Badlands. As a player, you are meeting Jackie. Jackie's your friend. Now, they together are trying to reach out for something that is very precious. They are trying to reach out for this chip of immortality, this gateway to eternal life. Jackie introduces you to Fixer Dexter Deshawn. He's a very important person in a social ladder of cyberpunk. He is able to provide the player with various jobs and contracts to be able to gather money, to be able to modify their bodies, push themselves to the limits, to put their hands on the chip. But uh, as you can expect, not everything goes as planned, and, uh, but to, to see it, you will have to play the game. There are an awful lot of really cool things in this trailer and there's a few that I would just love to talk about a little bit more for the people at home. So let's start with talking about a gang called the Mox. Now we see a few flashes of them in this trailer. I personally think they're really cool and one of my favourites but can you give us a little bit more information about them? Oh yes, so uh, the Mox is one of the gangs that player is going to interact with throughout the game. The Mox is the gang that has been formed in 2076 after death of uh, Elizabeth Borden. She was called Lizzie. Now, she was an owner of a brothel and former sex worker, and she was protecting working guys and girls from harassment, from abuse, and the gang is really continuing her mission. And as a player, you are going to interact with that gang, meet multiple different NPCs, and craft your own relationship with them, and understand what they are all about. So earlier on, you did mention a seventh district, a place called the Badlands. Now we saw a few shots of this in the trailer, but I'd love for you to give us a bit more detail about the district outside of the city walls. Okay, so the Badlands is this like dead, dried out space going around the whole night city. And as a player, you'll be able to traverse that space in your car or motorcycle. This is a space that is inhabited by the nomads. Nomads are living in the different families and they are traveling across that space in convoys made out of the cars and motorcycles. And as a player, you will be able to traverse and access different type of open world content that has been prepared specifically for you to get that awesome feel of the Badlands as an area. 
in the trailer we also saw like a completely metal creature. Now he didn't look like he was from the Maelstrom gang. This looked like something else. So please tell the people at home, who is this giant metal monster? <laughs> okay, so, so the big dude, that was Adam Smasher. He has been introduced in a pen and paper in Cyberpunk 2020 by our uh, senpai Mike Pondsmith. Adam Smasher is a fully converted cyborg. He is an, uh, he was always a loyalist of Arasaka. And uh, time has changed and in 2077 he had to find his own space in uh, Night City. But to uh, find out you have to play the game. In this trailer, we do see some flashes of a Ripper doc called Victor Vector. I think if people have watched our previous gameplays, they might remember him. But I'd really like for you to give the people at home some more information about what Ripper docs are and how they'll be interacting with them when they play Cyberpunk. So Ripper docs in our game, they are surgeons. They are like a specific type of a job in the social ladder of Cyberpunk. Yeah. They are accustomed yeah. and specialized in replacing limbs uh, to the metal ones. They can basically update your body, enhance your body, change you into this walking war machine. Hey, carnal! Hey, you got a problem? This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Something tells me that wasn't no coincidence, huh? Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2 the super fuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely, in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of vehicles. This does not look good. Puta madre! Grab the wheel, Jack! Oh, fuck! It looks like the scavengers from earlier are still angry. They're pulling ahead, Haida! Watch it now! Got it! All right! I think we got rid of him. That was intense. Ah! Shit! The fuck was that? Devils. Night City never sleeps. Danger lurks around every corner, even in daytime. Random encounters like these are an example of how your actions directly influence your open world experience. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, Jackie. So, they're done riding our asses? Scavs? Uh, sure, maybe. Should be looking for a new spot to slice and dice, not gunning after us. But, who knows? Real messed up in there, Scavs. Saw it yourself. Many forces are fighting for control of Night City, but the mega corporations are the real showrunners. The agent we're going to meet represents Militech, one of the largest companies in the private military sector. Why are we stopping? Remember the corpo off Dex's shard? Ranger, she's in the area, and we're gonna meet. Let me guess. She's in hot corporal water, desperate. Then you think you can use that? See if I can, yeah. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, preparation will be key when dealing with Night City's powerful, especially when these are corpos. Instead of just rushing in, let's assess the situation with our freshly installed Kiroshi optical scanner. There, let's take a closer look. Composite armor, car's a fucking tank. Shit. Yeah, Militech, no doubt about it. You sure you still want to meet him? Yeah, gotta do this. But don't you move a damn muscle. Not unless I start, that is.
These guys are levels higher than we are. Let's try to approach them carefully. Stout. Take it you were the one to call? Yep. We wanted... Think you're smart? But you can blackmail me, bitch? Set conditions? Calm the hell down! What is I've this? I've got you now, asshole! You're insane! Who the fuck is this? I'll know in two seconds flat. That fucking thing ready? All set. Are you here alone? The Corpos have hacked us through our personal link and have subjected Come us to a kind of lie detector program. The dialogue system in Cyberpunk 2077 is fully gameplay driven. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. Search the area. Now listen, Lewis, we don't need to be here all day. This piece of shit, Anthony Gilchrist, did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a convoy? It might be tempting to reach for the gun, but the consequences could be dire. To do with him Remember, or these guys are really tough. Shit. Checks out. <laughs> you got nothing on me! Nothing! Won't get away with this, you bitch! You're dead! Somebody shut him up. Take me home! Now! All right. I have no idea who you're working for or what you even want, but you better give me something solid or I will end you. I've got an offer. Oh, you are stretching. This better be fucking good. Gang goons who ripped you off? I know where to find them. They got a bot I want. Give me the funds to buy that bot. You can do what you want with the gang. I don't give a shit about the thieves. I want my mold. Cred chip, 50k. Just enough to buy you your bot. Thing is, Chip's gotta make it into the thieves' terminal. That's all I need. Think you can do that? Then we got a deal. Fine. I'm in. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. You're making a mistake! This cunt's good as dead! And she'll take you down with her! The agent gave us the money to buy the bot we need from the gang. By choosing to call the Militech agent earlier, we have now opened up a non-violent path through this quest. Of course, we could try and keep the money, but that would mean we'd have to take the merchandise by force, which requires a lot of firepower. Looked a little fishy, you know? A couple of tents, no signal, so I stay put. Good thing, too. Went down about like I expected. Made a deal, and we're good to meet with Maelstrom now. Mm-hmm. Be there soon. What do you expect? Corpse don't forgive or forget. Even these Borg fucks sense that. Feel the pressure. That's why they're holed up in this shithole, praying to the almighty Trip Six. Gotta move the tech, but they can't. Cause your new best friend from the tripped out, tanked out SUV is just begging them to try. How you wanna do this? Even now, we can choose how to approach this quest. Do we go in guns blazing, or do we try to negotiate All right. for the bomb? Plan's simple. We pay with the Corpo's cred and get out. I don't know, but. You're calling this one. For this demo, let's try oh, the more diplomatic approach. Uh, Tough shit. All we need's for them to buy it. <laughs> Don't know you. Want to talk to Royce? Main room. I'm waiting. <laughs> Damn well prepared. All strapped with Militech gear. Psycho Borgs chromed out with military grade hardware worth millions. Should be the guys we're about to meet are dangerous. 
They are members of the Maelstrom Gang, and their obsession with body modification goes way beyond even this world's standards. On their path to becoming machines, they don't shy away from even the most extreme measures. Anti-personnel mine. Shrapnel splitter. Hmm. My favorite. Can goons getting creative with their gear? It looks like they made this abandoned All Foods meat factory their hideout. Charming. Another one? Seriously? Maybe we should have taken them by surprise. A little late for regrets like that. Got us in their sights now. Just keep moving. Stay cool. They're just trying to spook us. Remember, we've chosen to buy the tech, not steal it. Hopefully this will go yeah, fast no and easy. This is a pretty well-guarded place. You can imagine what would have happened if we'd taken the violent path. Looking to buy a bot. Model MTO D12. Looks like a spider. Couch planted. Yo, Kerr. Peek around the corner, see if we got anything like that. Well, shit. Sit down. I'll stand. Can't move on your culo. Makes you an easy target. Sit down. That really necessary, hombre? I ain't your hombre. Sit. Sit your ass down before I plant a bullet in your skull. Jack, sit down. This ain't gonna end well, but... Shit. Well, all right, fucking bravo. Come on, lighten up. Have a whiff. Better. Now we can talk. The bot. Need to see it. Suit yourself. Fucking tricked out. State of the art this thing. Don't even got no standard port. Bells and whistles, though. Dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rivaling that of the human nervous system. Its actuators are actually pimped with titanium fiber, and it can go anywhere. Literally. Watch this. Fully integrated link, too. So when the spider starts crawling up walls, dangling from ceilings, you could lose your lunch. So, what you think? Hey, up, and let's get the fuck out of here. The buck. I'll take it. Two questions. What the fuck's going on? And who the fuck is this? Got 50 large on this crutching. And you positively reek of Militech. Dexter Deshaun sent me. Dexter Deshaun, dreads, gold plate, fat old fuck, that him? <laughs> we'll pay for the bot, be on our way. How much you say you had? 50k? Creds on this. Move it. Ooh, not the smoothest of deals, but it worked out in the end, right? Flathead's good gear. It'll do the trick. Whatever that trick is. Shit. Shit, shit, shit! It turns out the cred chip we got from the Militech agent contained a virus Cut which off. fried their system. The Royce, their leader, is making Thanks a break for it. <laughs> Had to end this way. Before we figure out a way to leave, let's grab the splinter that controls the bot from one of these dead maelstromers. Mm. 
The inspection system allows us to take a closer look at the splinter. You can inspect specific items to reveal details that can help in solving quests. Okay, let's equip the splinter to our chipware spot. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. All right, what else do we have here? Nice! A street-modified tech shotgun. Tech weapons fire rounds that penetrate walls and other types of cover. They also have an alternate fire mode that allows you to power up shots and deal more damage. It looks like there are several ways out of this room. Like those gates, for example. However, you'd have to be a skilled netrunner to hack into this terminal. Luckily, our engineering skills should allow us to disassemble that maintenance panel so we can get through the door. Got it. There are many skills in the game that players can apply in solving problems. The engineering skill can be used to fix, disassemble, and disarm devices blocking your path. Production line passes through here. And we're gonna pass through with it. So, from this point on, we're going to unlock the abilities of a high-end character to showcase some of the different mechanics we have in the game. One of the new weapon modules we now have installed is a ricochet targeting system connected to our eyes. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls and hit enemies hiding behind cover. This is another targeting system that will reveal enemies behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shotgun, it's a deadly combination. Looks like we found some loot. This is a smart gun. It's one of the more advanced weapons in the game allowing bullets to track and follow their target. It's one of many different weapons players can acquire. Weapons are built of modules that allow for deep customization and progression. This way, you can be sure to find something that will suit your place. The toughest bastards guarding this route. Probably some reason for that. Just a reminder, everything you've seen and are about to see, including this particular feature we're about to show you, is from a work-in-progress version of the game and may change over the course of development. Okay, all exits covered. Okay, let's try something different. We're going to take this guy down and connect directly to his neural sign. In the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. Through this Maelstrom gang map, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad containing the Maelstrom ganger we just connected to. 
From here, we can deploy software that affects the whole squad. For now, we'll simply unlock the ability to perform quick hacks. All right, time to show off our new high-level abilities. With quick hack, using the back door we unlocked a minute ago, we'll install a virus that jams the connection between the Maelstrom Ganger and his weapon. This will prevent him from firing. <laughs> Looks like he's having a problem now. Nice. Some of you might recognize these mantis blades. We can also double jump and bounce off of walls, which makes us a very agile, fast solo. Sweet, we just found a corporate tech rifle. Corpo weapons are top of the line. Let's scan this guy and see what's going on. It looks like Royce is back, and he's prepped. He's got an armored exoskeleton. We won't be able to get rid of him that easily. Our weapons are not dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Luckily, the scan we performed earlier revealed a weak spot. Attacking should bring the shield down. Shields down. Let's finish him off. Boy, it ain't going your way, you cunts. Okay, let's put him down and get this job over. That wasn't the smoothest raid, but we've got the bot, and Dex should be happy. But think back. What would have happened if we hadn't met with the Militech agent? or told Royce about the agent and her plans, or just decided to buy the bot ourselves. So many options, so many possibilities, and each will have consequences that will ripple through the game world and your story. And that's just one quest. Let's head out and finish the job. About goddamn time. Let's get out of here. together more often. Your chip had the clap. That's not discreet. You set me up. I fucked you over. You fucked the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the corp. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Remember that. Learn it. Years down the line, you'll be standing where I am, watching somebody else doing... Yep. Being a raging bitch to whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's time we were on our way, Ida. Okay, let's Get call Dex and tell him how area. things went down. My girl, appreciate eating soups. Mama not. Hey, Mr. Dex. Get us that table at the afterlife? Hmm, matter of fact, I did. Just in my gut and all, you know. Well, you were right to. <laughs> Well done, Missy. Well done. See you there. Shit, I can't believe it, Ina. Major Leagues. We're in. <laughs> I mean, we fucking pried the door open. About the only thing I want to pry open right now is a bottle of scotch. 
Oh no, not another three-nighter. Por favor. Need to get to know this city, Jack. Not just gun in hand. I'm on a crusade. Amen, I know. We finished the job. But hey V, you all right? <sighs> Let's do this. <laughs> you you out with this year. Where are we? Our BBS. Data Fortress. Bridge to the Deep Net. Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the playstyles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action. And a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? As Polaris' campaign promised, we This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. No Pacifica, well. Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently, it stood vacant, 
But now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the big guy up top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals' rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. You do what I say. So you chuck in. Now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. I've now seen the Grizzle Hagwe on Subnet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. Do Hagwe, I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are V? We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Hansen, you said you got murk work needs doing. Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. Placide, one of the Voodoo Boys higher-ups, has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the Voodoo Boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 20, 35, 07. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The Animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. Said you wanted my bag. insane. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their playstyles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine. Let's see how a solo playstyle in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors. or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. But Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Oh, Proceed. What's going on? Now, 
It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Net running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my plan. In the world of cyberpunk, few things go as planned. And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand? A rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time.